Hello, dears, and welcome to Al Husseini Virtual Lab Pathology Talks, Tips and Practical Tips. What I'm going to be sharing with you today is a very nice example, actually two examples of CMV colitis, but with different clinical context. So this is the first case, a 50-year-old uh, male patient who had a recent diagnosis of CLL and they presented with abdominal pain, so he underwent uh, upper and lower endoscopy. And this is the colonic biopsy, and as you can see, there is a lot of inflammation, and I'm going to share with you in a minute, an area of ulceration, as well as reactive epithelial changes, and really large number of those scattered large cells with abundant cytoplasm with some eosinophilia into the cytoplasm, and then a very large, really huge a nucleus that is seen. And to me, it was very much reminiscent of signet cells, as if you are looking at signet cells. This is another um, uh, a focus from the uh, another fragment of the tissue. And again, those large cells are scattered uh, around areas of uh, hemorrhage. And they are, to me, the first, uh, the initial appearance really reminded me of signet cells, really huge cells with acidophilic cytoplasm. And then this nucleus was really pushed to one side. Now, in the area of ulceration, you can see the typical appearance of a cell infected with CMV virus. First of all, it is an enlarged cells. We have both cytoplasmic inclusions, and these are what the pink eosinophilic material present in the cytoplasm. And then we have a nucleus with the prominent nucleolus reminiscent of the RS cells in Hodgkin's lymphoma or uh, the owl eye appearance. This is what it's called. And this is the CMV immunostain. So all of the, those large cells with even the what looked like the signet ring appearance, all uh, stain positive with the uh, CMV immune histochemistry. Usually it is a nuclear stain. Sometimes you might see some cytoplasmic, but essentially it is a nuclear stain. And this is just to contrast, this is the H&E with the large cells that are scattered among the inflammatory infiltrate and then the CMV immunohistochemistry. So uh, this really to contrast with the second case. The second case came from a patient with history of a bone marrow transplant. And patients with bone marrow transplantation tend to get prophylactic CMV uh, a treatment medication because of that, if they get activation of the CMV, you don't really see the full blown picture of the CMV infected cells where we have the enlarged cells, the cytoplasmic inclusions and the nuclear inclusions as I just shared with you. So this cell was of such what I do really routinely in practice, any patient with a previous history of BMT, I do routine staining of or CMV on all the colonic biopsies or the gastrointestinal biopsies. And this is the cell that turned out to be positive for this particular patient. So, uh, so this is the H and E to contrast. There is um, a less number of infected cells, and the cells they don't really show the typical enlarged uh, uh, cytoplasmic and nuclear features characteristic of cytomegalic virus. And even with immunohistochemistry, the cells are much younger and uh, much smaller. And just to contrast, this is the case without the prophylactic where we have larger number of, uh, of uh, the cells, the CMV infected cells uh, showing uh, a large uh, cytoplasm that contains the eosinophilic material as well as the nucleus with the prominent nucleolus. And this is beautifully highlighted with the CMV immunohistochemistry. In contrast with a, um, a bone marrow transplantation, you barely see, you're lucky to see one suspicious cell of CMV infection that will be then proven by immunistic chemistry. And you can see, actually, you can contrast the difference not only on the h and &E, but also on immunostain. Because of that, I tend always to do immunohistochemistry for CMV 
a virus on all bone marrow transplanted uh, patient biopsies, GI biopsies, because you easily can miss actually the CMV infection because and activation because of a prior a prophylactic a treatment. So the finally the, the the diagnosis for both patients is actually CMV colitis, but with difference in the microscopic appearance. And if you really don't pay attention to the small details as well as a apply CMV immunistic chemistry on all bone marrow transplant patients, you're going to miss uh, the chance for rendering the proper diagnosis and thus the management of the patient. I hope you find this tip useful in your daily practice. Thank you.